Want to invest in a world-class business? Looking for a market-beating dividend that just got increased by nearly 8%? Like the idea of buying a dividend aristocrat after it's dropped by 30%? Then you have to check out today's video. He is a best-selling author. 30-year-old Jason Fieber has a plan. This guy retired at only 33 years old. I don't know if I know too many people that have accomplished something like that. He's really kind of a guru when it comes to passive income. Before I get into today's content, please give us a big thumbs up if you find value in our videos. Helps us to get the word out and grow the channel, and I'd really appreciate it. And make sure to stay tuned until the end of the video for a special news announcement. I want to tell you about a high quality stock that pays big, growing, reliable dividends. These growing dividends are funded by growing profit because this business is one of the world's largest medical device companies. A high quality healthcare business can be an excellent long-term investment. Demand is only growing. After all, we've got a larger global population that's living longer than ever. Well, human bodies naturally deteriorate, which leads to more demand for healthcare. It's an ever larger pool of potential customers, and that should lead to ever higher profits and ever higher dividends. I personally invested in stocks just like this one on my way to going from below broke at age 27 to financially free at 33. By the way, I explain exactly how I achieved financial freedom in just six years in my early retirement blueprint. If you're interested, you can download a free copy of my early retirement blueprint using the link in the description of this video. Getting back to the stock I'll tell you about today though, perhaps best of all, it looks undervalued right now. Price is what you pay, but value is what you get. Why is that important? Because buying a dividend growth stock when it's undervalued should provide for a higher yield, greater long-term total return potential, and reduced risk. With this in mind, I want to share with you an opportunity I recently came across in shares of Medtronic PLC, which appear to be trading at a significant discount today. Medtronic PLC stock ticker MDT is a global developer and manufacturer of medical devices for chronic diseases. Founded in 1949, Medtronic is now a $127 billion by market cap healthcare giant that employs 90,000 people. The company reports results across four segments, cardiovascular, 36% of fiscal year 2022 revenue, medical surgical, 29%, neuroscience, 28%, and diabetes, 7%. Medtronic's product portfolio is comprised of a variety of life-saving and life-improving medical devices that include implantable defibrillators, heart valves, insulin pumps, glucose monitoring systems, pacemakers, stents, and surgical tools. Healthcare is an area of the global economy that enjoys secular growth. Healthcare needs do not correlate at all with economic cycles. If one is sick, they won't care about GDP figures or where inflation is at. Human bodies are such that there's constant base level of demand for care. On top of it, the global population continues to grow. Also, people are living longer on average, and worldwide wealth also continues to rise on average. So you have more older and wealthier human beings walking around, which naturally boosts demand for quality healthcare. If that isn't appealing enough, companies like Medtronic benefit from some degree of inelastic demand. Spending on their products is almost always non-discretionary in nature, and there's little room or time to worry about pricing. For example, if you need heart surgery, the particulars of a pricing of medical devices are not likely to be a high priority for you when you're more concerned about surviving. Medtronic thus benefits from constant demand, rising demand, and inelastic demand. That trifecta is tough to beat. But wait, there's more. Medtronic has carved out huge market shares in nearly every area in which it competes. Morningstar states this, and I quote, Medtronic has historically held roughly 50% share in its core heart devices. It's also the market leader in spinal products, insulin pumps, and neuromodulators for chronic pain, unquote. All of this adds up to a very compelling business model that should see its revenue, profit, and dividend rise at high rates over the decades to come. Already, Medtronic has increased its dividend for 45 consecutive years. This is an esteemed dividend aristocrat. The 10-year dividend growth rate is 10%, which is strong. Now, Medtronic's more recent dividend increases have been in the high single-digit range. In fact, the company increased the dividend by 7.9% only weeks ago. Still, that's more than enough growth when you also consider the stock's current yield of 2.8%. That yield is twice as high as what the broader market offers, and it's 70 basis points higher than its own five-year average. 
And the payout ratio is a low 48.7% based on midpoint guidance for this fiscal year's adjusted earnings per share. That indicates a very safe dividend that's set to continue growing at least as fast as the business. I like dividend growth stocks in what I call the sweet spot, a yield of between 2.5% and 3.5% paired with high single digit or better dividend growth. We can see that this stock is almost squarely in the center of the sweet spot. Looking at business growth, Medtronic enlarged its revenue from $16.6 billion in fiscal year 2013 to $31.7 billion in fiscal year 2022. That's a compound annual growth rate of 7.5%. Very good top line growth here. That said, much of this growth was a result of the acquisition of Covidian PLC in 2015 for almost $50 billion. This complementary addition to the company with Covidian focusing on endomechanical instruments, adding to Medtronic's cardiovascular and orthopedic offerings, gave a large boost to the top line in absolute terms. Meanwhile, earnings per share grew from $3.37 to $5.55 adjusted over this period, which is a compound annual growth rate of 5.7%. I used adjusted earnings per share for fiscal year 2022, which nullifies certain issues that impact gap earnings per share and make comparisons difficult. The bottom line growth here is only okay, but I think two things have to be kept in mind. One, Medtronic's outstanding share count is up rather dramatically after the company used equity to help fund the Covidian acquisition. This has made per share growth more challenging. Two, the pandemic has negatively affected Medtronic. The global healthcare complex has been focused on COVID-19. Anything that could be delayed, such as elective surgeries, have been delayed. Worse yet, key product launches were coinciding with the pandemic. Delayed healthcare is likely causing pent-up demand, which could prove to be a strong growth driver for the business over the near term. Adding in new products precisely when demand is rising could be doubly powerful for the business, turning a former headwind into a new tailwind. Looking forward, CFRA believes that Medtronic will compound its earnings per share at an annual rate of 7% over the next three years. Speaking on the points I just made, CFRA states this, and I quote, the pandemic negatively impacted Medtronic's many recent product launches, but with a recovery well underway, we are confident that those product launches will support revenue acceleration, unquote. Moreover, they also add the following, again, and I quote, the key products to pay attention to, launched or soon to be launched, include Micra AV Pacemaker, the Renal Denervation Program, and most importantly, the Hugo Robotic Assisted Surgery Platform, unquote. Regarding Hugo, CFRA notes, and I quote, in our opinion, the Hugo platform will be a key long-term growth driver for Medtronic, given how vast the robotic surgery opportunity is, unquote. I see recent results from Medtronic representing a trough of sorts, setting up the company for a terrific recovery recovery in revenue and earnings over the coming years. The one-two punch of pent-up healthcare demand and new products looks very promising. And that's only speaking on the near term. As I stated earlier, Medtronic has a fantastic business model for the long term. I think CFRA's 7% earnings per share forecast is very doable for Medtronic. Actually, I find it likely that Medtronic will exceed this mark. That sets the dividend up to grow at the 7% level at least, which should be pairing with a near 3% yield. I find it difficult to dislike that setup. Moving Moving over to the balance sheet, the company has a solid financial position. The long-term debt to equity ratio is 0.4, while the interest coverage ratio is 11. Both numbers have meaningfully improved for fiscal year 2022 relative to fiscal year 2021, as long-term debt is down and EBIT has risen. Profitability is good, but I do think Medtronic can and will do better as recovery plays out. Over the last five years, the firm has averaged annual net margin of 13.5% and annual return on equity of 8%. Pointing to better numbers with a recovery, net margin came in at nearly 16% for fiscal year 2022. Medtronic is running a great business that has done well for a long time and is likely to do even better over the coming years. And with IP, R&D, switching costs, economies of scale, a global distribution network, high barriers to entry, and a diversified portfolio of entrenched products, the company is protected by durable competitive advantages. Of course, there are risks to consider. Regulation, litigation, and competition are omnipresent risks in every industry. Regulation and litigation risks are both elevated here relative to other business models. Any changes in the way healthcare spending is managed, especially in the United States, would almost certainly impact the company. Possible product recalls are a risk. Medtronic's products are fairly insulated from economic cycles, but a recession could cause a delay or even outright cancellation of elective treatments. The company is exposed to technology risks. Any major technolo technological changes in medical devices can alter the competitive landscape. These risks should be carefully thought over, but I still believe that Medtronic is an appealing long-term investment idea. And the 30% drop in the stock's price has created a level of undervaluation that makes it particularly appealing right now. 
The stock's price earnings ratio is 17.3. That's based on adjusted earnings per share. This is a very low earnings multiple for a high quality dividend aristocrat. The stock's five year average PE ratio is 35.4 for perspective. To be fair, that five year average is using gap earnings per share. Still, we can see a big disconnect here. Moreover, the price to cash flow ratio of 17.7 is well off of its own five year average of 21.6. And the yield, as noted earlier, is significantly higher than its own recent historical average. I valued shares using a dividend discount model analysis. I factored in a 10% discount rate and a long-term dividend growth rate of 7.5%. That's a dividend growth rate I've consistently used for Medtronic over the years. I used these same numbers when I last analyzed and valued the business in late 2021. I've been afforded the opportunity to be so consistent with the valuation model here because Medtronic has been so consistent with the dividend increases. Indeed, the company just increased the dividend by 7.9% only weeks ago, which came in almost bang on my number. With CFRA's forecast for Medtronic's near-term earnings per share growth being at 7%, the payout ratio still being low, and my own personal belief that Medtronic can do better than where CFRA's at, I don't see a 7.5% dividend growth rate expectation as unreasonable. The near-term might be pretty close to this level, but I think Medtronic's earnings per share and dividend growth could accelerate nicely when looking out beyond the next five years. The dividend discount model analysis gives me a fair value of $116.96. The reason I use a dividend discount model analysis is because a business is ultimately equal to the sum of all the future cash flow it can provide. The dividend discount model analysis is a tailored version of the discounted cash flow model analysis as it simply substitutes dividends and dividend growth for cash flow and growth. It then discounts those future dividends back to the present day to account for the time value money since a dollar tomorrow is not worth the same amount as a dollar today. I find it to be a fairly accurate way to value dividend growth stocks. Morningstar rates Medtronic as a four-star stock with a fair value estimate of $129. CFRA rates Medtronic as a four-star buy with a 12-month target price of $117. I came out within pennies of where CFRA landed. Averaging the three numbers out gives us a final valuation of $120.99, which would indicate the stock is possibly 26% undervalued. Here's the bottom line, guys. Medtronic PLC is running a great business that has favorable demand characteristics and global demographics on its side. The pandemic caused a temporary lull in sales, but that only sets them up for a nice recovery and accelerating growth. With 45 consecutive years of dividend increases, double-digit long-term dividend growth, a low payout ratio, a market-beating yield, and the potential that shares are 26% undervalued, this dividend aristocrat is one of my top long-term ideas for dividend growth investors. And now for a special news announcement, Starbucks Corporation stock ticker SBUX recently announced that it has reopened almost 600 of the 940 stores it operates in China. This is a very positive development for the business, and it could be a big catalyst for the stock as the China lockdowns have been weighing on both. Indeed, the stock did rally on this news, but this is a stock that is still down nearly 40% from its 52 week high. This is a high quality dividend growth stock to have on your radar, if not in your portfolio. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Give us a like if you did, and let us know in the comments what you think about this stock. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell so you don't miss out on new content. Also take a look at the description box below for some important links, including the link to my personal stock portfolio. This six figure portfolio, which I call the Fire Fund, generates enough passive dividend income for me to live off of. It allowed me to retire in my early 30s. I've made my portfolio entirely accessible over a Patreon, and I also post alerts there whenever I buy or sell stock. I put my money where my mouth is, and I'm often invested in the same high quality dividend growth stocks that I make videos on. Over the years, I've heard from thousands of investors who have been profiting from many of the same exact stocks that I own. So if you think this is something that you could benefit from as well, check the link in the description to see my portfolio and start getting my buy and sell alerts. I'll see you next time.